Good morning this Wednesday of Holy Week, the last day of March, a quarter of uh, 2021 passed us by already. Um, we are coming towards the end of the plagues in our Old Testament readings. We'll get the ninth plague and the warning of the tenth plague, uh, which we should get on Friday, I believe. But <clears throat> um, this is one because I think we're going over the most important part of Exodus coming up here, the, the Passover, the Pascha. Um, in fact, in most other languages other than German and English, Easter is called Pascha or Pach or Pascha or a derivation thereof. So if you really want to understand Easter and a lot of what's going on, it'd be good to pay attention to the uh, end of that, the, uh, the tenth plague as it is approaching. And then we're also continuing on with Hebrews chapter 4, and we will pray uh, the litany today. So um, with that being said, let's uh, get ready for our devotions. Page 295 in your hymnal or page 0 or 043 in your treasury of daily prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 89, verses 20 through 27. <clears throat> I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, so that my hand shall be established with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not, shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his right hand on the sea, excuse me, his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Exodus chapter 10, verse 21, and then chapter 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be a darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Your little ones also may go with you. Only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take of them to serve the Lord our God, and we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take care never to see my face again, for on the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. The Lord said to Moses, Yet one more plague I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now in the hearing of the people, that they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. So Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle, there shall be a great cry throughout the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. But not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel. 
either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the ninth plague should have done it. Should have done it. I mean, you had a return to the primordial darkness before God said, let there be light. They cannot see. And, and again, if you want to think about, about the Exodus and the plague, Egypt is the, uh, a land of its own. It's got its own God, its own theology, and, and the sun god is the highest. And just Ra got taken up. Boom! That should mean you just go along. But even then, Pharaoh wants to negotiate. He wants to, he wants to maintain control where he has none. And it goes poorly. We do not control God. We do not even control our lives, our days. We receive things from God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, in receiving it. The more you try to have control over everything, the more bitter your life will be. Receive what God gives you. Good days, bad days, all alike. This is the day the Lord has made. So, with that being said, let's go look at our epistle, Hebrews chapter 4. Oh, oh, this is a wonderful chapter. I enjoyed, I remember translating this chapter. It was a beautiful chapter. So, Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. As he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. It is finished. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, of not hearing, Again, he appoints a certain day. Today, saying through David so long afterwards, and the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken another day of rest later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest. So that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience, not hearing. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed, have their neck exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two things from this, this text that are just fantastic. One, the idea of striving to enter into God's rest. Rest is a major theme. Comes up from, from chapter 2 of the Bible. Genesis 2 begins with seventh day God rested. Boom, that's the, that's the setup. And the point of this is our lives as Christians are not defined by our works. Not by what we do, not by what we accomplish, not by what we control, but rather 
we enter God's rest. We, we hear, we listen. We do not, that word for disobedience means to not hear, to not listen, to not pay heed. We hear the word. We hear the gospel. And we say, all right, we receive. The Christian life is receptive. But if you want to make it all about what you do and your works and your efforts, that puts you outside of the faith. Because that's not faith. That's not receiving. That's you trying to do everything, control everything. And you get a, you get a contrast here. If you want to be, if you want to talk about works, well, yeah, there, there is sacrifice, but you want to know how the sacrifice goes <laughs> with you being sacrificed. Um, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edges. Okay, let me start at 11. Therefore, let us strive to enter that rest. All right, so, so make every effort to make sure that you live by faith and receiving things rather than your works so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience, the same sort of refusing to hear God's word. Why? Well, because the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the vision of soul and of spirit, kill you, of joints and of marrow. When the sacrifices were done in the Old Testament, the animal was broken apart. Really, it was much more like butchery than we think of it. Discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are, okay, we get this translation as naked and exposed. That word for naked is the word that refers to having been sheared for sacrifice. You know, you go to a surgery and they, uh, well, we need to shave this part. That's that. It's the equivalent of that of what they would do for for the sacrifices. Because again, if you're if you're going to do a cut the neck and bloodlet, you're going to make sure that there's clearness there. And then that word for exposed is literally trachea something or other. It, it's your trachea. Your your trachea is exposed. It's the the your head is pulled back and the knife is there. That's, that's the image. So how do you want this to be? Because there's going to be the sacrifice. Do you want to be the one who is sacrificed because you want it to be your works? Or do you want to be the one who receives the benefit of the sacrifice? Because again, we, we miss this. We think of a sacrifice and it's just all up there. No, no, no. Whenever there was a sacrifice in the Old Testament, the people who brought the sacrifice got to eat. We're going to see this with the Passover. When the Passover lamb is sacrificed, what does everyone do? You eat it. Now, there's going to be a way to eat this, people. You're going to eat it roasted. You're going to eat it with your staff in your hands, your belt on. But the Lord is going to feed you. Because whenever there is a sacrifice, whenever blood is shed so that death may pass over, there will be a meal after. Cross, altar, communion rail. This is an old pattern, folks. And when Jesus does up the Lord's Supper, as we'll get to hear about in detail tomorrow night on Monday, Thursday, it's not a reinventing of the wheel. It is a fulfillment, a, an expansion, a completion, if you want to use the words of Jesus on the cross, of what had been set up all the way from the beginning, from the Old Testament, that is unfolding throughout the Old Testament. And that's the point that Hebrews is making here. You don't have to run back to Jerusalem, to that temple, and, and join up in their rebellion and, and do your work to bring up the glorious empire. Because no, you're, you're just going to end up getting killed. You've got everything you need in Christ and in the preaching of his word and in his supper. It's everything. So, um, hope to see you all on, on Thursday night as we, we celebrate the Lord's Supper on Monday, Thursday. So, having said that, uh, well, okay, I mean, like if you're the folks that live in New Jersey, I hope you get to go and enjoy the Lord's Supper over in New Jersey and all that type of stuff. And yeah, but you, you get the point. Um, as it is a Wednesday, we will pray the litany today. And um, so uh, let us begin. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, 
from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring to the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord to forgive our enemies and persecutors and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no living man be justified. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers, and carry us through all temptations, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen the prayer of the day. <clears throat> Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. All right, so let me uh, let me say where we're going to be going, because we're, we're wrapping up Holy Week. Um, tomorrow, Monday, Thursday, we'll have devotion in the morning, Monday, Thursday, service at 7 p.m. Uh, that'll be broadcast as well. 
Good Friday, I will be doing the, the normal morning devotion at 8 o'clock. And then from noon to 3 is the Traore service. Uh, I will be broadcasting that. The Traore service is basically seven little services that are each 20 to 25 minutes long. Uh, each one based, they, you go through the Passion according to John, and then you also read one of the, uh, the, uh, the seven last words from Jesus from the cross. So there will be seven different sermons on that, seven different pastors. So uh, Pastor uh, Chris Whitby is coming down to do the opening service. He is the assistant to the president of the Illinois district, or Northern Illinois district, and uh, vice president of the district, and also Pastor Robert Grant Park. Corey Esty should be here, Pastor Jewell, Pastor Weiss, Pastor Mueller, uh, I, Pastor Bodorf, and I can't remember who else. Myself, and I... I it's on a list somewhere. I get the last one. So that'll be lovely. You can watch. You can come and go as you can, if you wish. It's perfectly fine. It's not one where we expect you to be here for three hours. The bulletins will be in the back. You can just grab a bulletin, find your place, and go. And I, I think we might be putting the bulletin on the website. I can't remember whether or not I told Diane yes or no. So, but you can watch. It'll be lovely. 7 p.m. on Good Friday night, we will have Tenebrae. And that'll be our normal Good Friday evening. No devotion Saturday morning. No devotion Sunday morning. It's these two. And no devotions Monday. I'm, I'm taking Monday full off. Uh, Saturday night at 5 p.m. we'll be having the vigil, which is basically the same thing as Christmas Eve. It's going to be lessons and carols, but Easter carols. Really cool service. Starts off in darkness. Probably should have late, do it late at night, but I'm a, not a night owl. And then um, uh, the, the service that I always think of Pastor Burfine on. I got to do it with him the first time. Um, then Easter Sunday, we will be having service at 8.30 and 10.45. Both services will be sung. Um, Easter egg hunt in between. No, no breakfast this year, but uh, the kids will be hunting Easter eggs. And if you want to elbow the kids out of the way of an Easter egg and have some chocolate for breakfast, I'm not going to complain. Um, and then coming back to the Tuesday after Easter, um, we're going to... We'll uh, kick up with devotions again. Um, no Bible studies on the weekend. Um, we're 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 just just doing services. Um, starting then next Tuesday, I I want to do matins during the Easter season, just as we did matins during the Christmas season, at, at least to start off, because it'll be it'll be Easter. We should sing. So uh, we'll probably shift to matins for a bit. We'll see how long that keeps up. I won't be doing uh, devotions on Friday after this week because I'm going to actually start taking days off in the Easter season again. So, um, but we'll we'll go back to our old schedule. So there's the roadmap. So <clears throat> it's fun. It's good. And then and then after Easter service, I'm going to take the kids up to Schaumburg and go get some Japanese food and let them go swim and get them out of the house after the week of spring break where they've been in the house driving my wife nuts with energy so that's where we're going that's the roadmap so you know what's up and um tomorrow we'll start focusing on the the tridentum the three intense days of uh of holy week so have a good day everyone i hope you uh oh yeah sure break in holy week you could go go oh it's 40 degrees great well, and then and then the other thing on holy thursday is i'll watch the cub game opening day. Not there, but at home. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.